Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Painting in Your PJs with Manette. Bear with me for just a minute as I get the live stream going over on Facebook as well as here on YouTube. So good morning everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me here on Painting in Your PJs with Minette. I am Dr. Minette Riordan. I'm in my PJs and my favorite hoodie this morning. It's a little chilly here in Loveland, Colorado, 32 degrees and it has been unseasonably beautifully warm. So if you are brand new to painting in your PJs with Minette, I'm trying to clean up some space here on my table. This channel is really all about art as a creative process for personal growth, for self-discovery, using visuals, imagery, symbolism to connect with really what matters most to us. And today is, good morning, Kim. Good to see you. Hi, Judy. Welcome, welcome. And today is the last day of our month-long series of journaling prompts around Renew, Reflect, Refresh. And on Thursday morning, February 1st, I will have more information. I'm still working with it about what we're going to focus on for the month of January. And I think I'm going to use a lot of those first couple of weeks of February to get ready for the 100 day project, which starts on February 18th this year. And I'll say more about what it is, if you're new to it, how to choose a project, you know, how it serves me and uh, why I commit to doing this. So this will be my third or fourth year to do the 100 day project. A couple of years ago, I started and stopped because we were in the middle of moving. I don't know why I said I would do it. And uh, last year, it was exciting to see the body of work that was created after 100 days. And I've been enjoying these last few months of doing 30 days of more sort of themed practice in my own journals inspired by a variety of different prompts. So the prompt that I chose today was the final one of our list of prompts, Renew, Reflect, Refresh. And it's about emotional echoes. Um, my, what's the matter, Diego? My cat is trying to cough up a hairball. Not very exciting way to start the video this morning. Are you all right, buddy? Okay, so good morning, good morning. Awesome, thank you. I'm sorry, guys, I'm just keeping an eye on my cat here. I may need to text Brad to come get him, but he seems to be okay. Um, probably got a dust ball or something. So apologies for that, but this is a live show and this is how we roll. So our theme for today is emotional echoes and exploring emotional echoes through layered art, representing the depth of feeling about a specific issue or topic. And I've mentioned a few times on this show that I have been reading this absolutely beautiful book called Rooted, which is about the connectedness or interconnectedness of nature, science, and spirit. It's uh, part memoir, part nature writing, and it's really beautifully written. I only have a, a couple of chapters left. So when I think about emotional echoes and I think about things that I care deeply about. I do care deeply about nature and earth. It's a big part of my own personal practice is feeling connected to nature. And then at the same time, I had so much fun going resale art shopping to a couple of awesome stores. And Leslie, if you come out for the retreat in June, I have a fun one uh, for you to check out down in Longmont about half an hour from here. And I found a bunch of old cloth paper scissor magazines. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And thank you, Leslie. Yes, I should pause for a moment and talk about that too. And then we're going to dive into art making with no more talking about um, Monday morning, a brand new series called Making Morning Sacred. Every Monday morning, I will be working on one of my son Connor's gorgeous sacred circle designs and bringing a moment of 
mindfulness and intentionality to your Monday mornings. It'll be at the same time, 7 a.m. And I'm going to give it a try for a couple of weeks and see if people like it. You guys can let me know and I'll decide to, to keep that going for a while. So one of the things I found was a huge stack of free magazines at one of the two places that we went to. And I was going through them for collage. <clears throat> and I found this cute, this was actually a kid's project. And I often find such great joy in doing kid-like projects that were inspired by this artist, Ida Kohlmeyer, who is an artist from Louisiana, um, died at the lovely ripe age of about 83 or 84, I think, in the 90s. And she had some really interesting approaches to abstract expressionism and how she worked with tools. And this one, I'm not sure what the material she painted a lot in oil or acrylic. Good morning, Becky. Welcome, welcome. And Carol, welcome. And Yvonne, welcome. Great to see you all here. So I wanted to kind of play with this idea <clears throat> of emotional echoes using really simple tools of oil pastels and watercolor paints. So that is what I'm personally going to be playing with this morning. But you could play along with this with markers, with crayons, with anything that you have on hand. I did a little bit of a zoom back out here. I did a little bit of a fun quick sample page this morning and I really love how the watercolors look over the oil pastel because the oil pastel works as a resist so it created some really cool effects and we got some weird shadows here this morning so bear with me just a second let me get this off of here all right I'm like, what is hanging? Everything got moved around, so I'm not sure what's going on. Apologies for tech stuff. That's the, the strap of my camera all of a sudden is hanging right in the light of the camera. Might not bug you guys, but it's going to bug me. Also, so we finally got to the point of enough viewer hours, and these were uh, watercolor crayons I played with a little bit too. Hi, Tom. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend away for your reading retreat that sounded so much fun, Leslie. I played with some watercolor crayons a little bit and um, didn't like them as much. So I'm going to stick with oil pastels and watercolor paint. I also realized that I wanted to turn my journal on the vertical here and get a little more space for these grids. And so when I started to think about this theme of emotional echoes and thinking about layered images, symbols, things like that that I care deeply about, I want to start thinking about nature symbols, right? What are nature symbols that are meaningful and impactful to me? So trees, leaves, flowers, water, sun, moon, stars. And I also come back to what I've talked about a lot this month about how can all of this also be connected to our core values and what's most important to us through that lens of core values. And if connection is at the center of everything that I do. I want to think about the my connection to earth. And in the uh, book Rooted, she talks about walking barefoot. So maybe uh, a footprint would be a way of footprint. I can't write and talk at the same time. Also thinking about, she had a beautiful chapter on trees and how trees go, thinking about growth rings of a tree and some of the, the different elements, mushrooms, I love mushrooms and fungi, moss, all of those kind of things. 
and I want this to be really simple and childlike and playful. Fantastic, Leslie. That sounds amazing. And, you know, it's so interesting how the, the topics in my life all kind of come together in different and interesting ways. I have been re-listening, so I'm going to grab some oil pastels and get my grid down. Oh, and here's some of those fun uh, childlike drawing. Good morning, Kay. We all need more playful. I love this one has a, looks like a little spider in here. I love all the lines and the boldness of some of these and the, the choices of the watercolors. So we're going to have some fun and play with these ideas inspired by the artist Ida Kohlmeier. And I've got just some bits and pieces of some faber castell oil pastels here and i'm going to start with my grid and again childlike i'm not thinking about straight lines i'm not gonna um, overly think about let's see maybe some green um, color combinations but I'm going to get a, a pretty big grid in here and then I'm going to fill this grid with some of those symbols that I was just journaling about. And um, so definitely a leaf shape. And the more we kind of practice drawing these simple little shapes the the easier it gets which i think where this um we did a little bit of sketch noting this month and i think that's the direction i'm going to go for february and I'll, I'll talk more about about that but i always love the way all the themes and topics of my life sort of come together unintentionally so i have been out as much as possible walking in nature lately get some stars in here because it's been unseasonably warm and it's not going to last because we have a big storm coming in this weekend get a moon in here and definitely some rain like all the different elements of nature feel really important to me so i have been re-listening to the book the secret garden which is the book for my next mythical makeover experience which is happening february 9th 10th and 11th it's all new content different so these are my attempt at drawing some sort of tree-like growth rings here just capturing the essence of things and I'm in the part of the book if you're familiar with the novel where the the boy Colin who's basically spent most of his life in bed is now get a tree in here out in the spring garden moving and walking and strong and the the dad who's basically disappeared for a decade after the death of his wife <clears throat> is having a similar experience about connecting to nature and feeling himself come alive again and so I think this theme of connection to nature and I'm teaching at Ali Manning's Books in the Woods in Massachusetts in May and my topic is nature journaling so all these themes are kind of you know coming to together in my mind to talk about just you know how deeply important nature is to me it's kind of fascinating that everywhere I'm turning right now that is what is appearing and so I love to sort of pay attention to those things that are happening around me and the information that shows up and I get curious about what's the lesson for me personally and if I come back to this theme here of emotional echoes emotional echoes 
how does my connection with nature really ripple out into every area of my life? That would be one of those questions that I would consider. How does my connection with nature impact my moods, my being? Good morning, Judy. So these are all some of the questions that I'm considering in this theme of connecting to nature and emotional echoes. Judy, you're curious about oil pastels, never used them before, but have a set that someone gave me. Yes, they are smudgy, they get on your fingers, um, they can be messy, but they can also, you can have some fun blending them together. I most often use them as a resist in my painting, but also I really love, and I'm going to forget her name, there's an artist, Judy, I don't know if you're on Instagram, that does these wonderful little scenes with oil pastels. So they're, they're fun, yes, they are smudgy but they're also very creamy and um, playful, but they make a fabulous resist for watercolor or for acrylic painting. And what this artist <clears throat> does is to capture, she does a lot of thumbnail sketches using oil pastels. So for example, if I wanted to, and I've done a few of these somewhere on the channel, I have some oil pastel landscapes that I created too. So they're wonderful for capturing little thumbnails and practicing in your journal. And when you do this, Judy, you definitely need to put like deli paper or, you know, waxed paper between the pages because they will, you know, smudge into other pages in your journal. But what I love about them is their smudgy creaminess and you can have a lot of fun playing with them. So it's worth getting them out, exploring, swatch them out, see what they do, see if you like the, the texture of them. And actually Judy in Sacred Circles in our class on the second uh, Thursday in February, we're going to use oil pastels to color a sacred circle. So you'll get a little bit different introduction and perspective there. So I'm feeling like I want to get some black in here. And maybe some rocks would be good. I love playing with rocks and that kind of rootedness. Maybe I can get that sort of essence of some feet print in there as well. Let's see, I can never have too many flowers, but also there's a sense of the interconnectedness of all things. So maybe some hearts to kind of represent the interconnectedness of all things, which is, you are so welcome, Judy, is really important to me. It also feels like there's that idea of just meandering, and you can see I'm, a couple of places I'm just sort of going over, like walking the path, like following where the path leads me. So each of these items, whether they're tangible or intangible, has that kind of emotional echo for me and my own connection to nature. And I love playful little activities like this that I can just sit down in the morning and not take a ton of time not take a ton of time, but just enjoy getting some color on to paper. So one emotional echo is about connection to nature. The other one that I was thinking deeply about this morning was my connection to self and to spirit, which can get integrated in here 
as well. Let's see. I got the sun, the moon, the stars, the clouds. Ah, some water. How about we get some waves in here? And my goal this morning is to get myself out for a nice long walk connecting with nature so water feels important as well and what about just some words right so maybe I'm just going to put nature in here this whole thing it would be fun maybe to try doing this with some words well duh that would be really smart of me wouldn't it Leslie since I talk about how important those mountains are to me all the time so let's just get some few little mountains in there and then once I have these oil pastels down let's see what we got floating around here is there still there's not much paint on there I'm going to use just what I have in this little tin here some of them them are a little bit empty but I'm gonna spritz this get those nice and wet but I'm also gonna spritz my paper because I want that watercolor to be really nice and flowy and on the the sample page I did not do that and I'm gonna do a couple of these pages because I also want to do one that is a little more symbolic or perhaps a little even more storytelling style in uh, inspired by Ida Kohlmeyer and I love this series is called the circus series but I love her use of marks and colors so we're gonna do a couple of these but I want to start it with something really simple and fun and then what I love is just watching those watercolors. We're going to mix our colors all up, flow over the top, settle into the holes. Let's see, I'm going to zoom in so you can really see what that watercolor does when it flows right over the top. It doesn't uh, mix or blend. With the color, it literally just lays right over and between the edges of things. And it's so much fun to play with. And so remembering that the more that we make our creative practice playful, the more we're going to enjoy showing up for that practice. And the less attached we become to perfectionism or to I got to make it realistic or beautiful or shareable the more we can simply sink into play and enjoyment which brings me right back to how I feel when I am in nature it brings out that childlike sense of wonder and awe and joy every time and every time there's something new. And I think it was in Rooted or it could have been something else I was reading about this idea of really getting to know a place, especially the place where you live. Are there woods near your house or parks that you haven't explored? Do you pay attention to the changing of the seasons where you live? And I think this is such an important inquiry to be in. So one of the things that I'm really, really loving about living in Colorado is having four seasons and all the differences that create. So I love this just very simple childlike page that really captures those sort of emotional echoes of how important me connecting to nature is. What does it mean to me, right? So it's not fancy, it's symbolic. Um, when we lived in Goleta for a decade, every time we walked on the beach, something was different. 
the shoreline had moved. New things had watch, washed up on the shore. The bluffs were different. Different times of year, there were different shore birds. We had a couple of mallards that were like seagoing mallards. It was hilarious. They would be down in the surf. All right, so I'm going to get this one dry a little bit. Hello from Western Australia. Welcome, Jackie. Get this one dry, and then we're going to go on and take a little bit different approach to this idea of emotional echoes and childlike play with watercolor and oil pastel. Again, inspired by the artist Ida Kohlmeyer. Right. Now let's take this same idea and have a little bit different approach to that idea of emotional echoes and things that we care about. You are so welcome, Judy. I love when people learn new things and when they uh, are willing to try, experiment, and explore new things. All right, so this time I'm going to use a pencil, let's see, to get that grid down because I don't want that grid to be as perhaps obvious that maybe I'll focus more on color, <coughs> excuse me, with this one. Again, no straight lines. just an abstract grid. And then I want to come in and I want to think about, again, this idea of emotional echoes, the layering of color and texture and symbol and story. And I'm going to think about what might be some symbols that I might put in here or marks or even color. We talked about the connection between emotion and color in the lesson last week or the week before. I don't remember on abstract emotional landscapes, but I want to come in and maybe just think a little bit differently about how I approach this when I think about connection to self, connection to spirit, connection to others. So one of the things that popped into my mind was I want eyes wide open to really be able to see and connect. And again, I'm using very childlike images. So when you're working with oil pastels, these are very thick and chunky. I'm not going to get a lot of sort of fine tuning here. but I'm going to be maybe a little more intentional with my images. So connection, eyes wide open might be one thing that I think about. And I'm still leaving plenty of white space between and within these because I want to flow that watercolor over the top. I want my heart to be open to connect and receive. In one part in the book this morning, in the book Rooted, she was talking about connection with nature and being a tree hugger and a human hugger and uh, shared a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh about when we hug someone or something, whether it is a tree or another human being, but to hug them with our entire 
mind, body, and spirit. I am a hugger. I love to give and receive hugs. So maybe we'll have two little stick figures here hugging each other. So again, the theme, hello, April from Ottawa. Welcome, welcome. So the theme here is emotional echoes, and I'm working on symbols that represent connection to self. I might have the symbol of a cross in here, a little bit more of kind of a, a Celtic cross. Connection to my Celtic roots and Celtic spirit. What other symbols do you think about when you think about connection? Right, there's so many for me and sometimes those things can be a little more abstract. So an example of something a little more abstract What if we went a little abstract and thought about just the interconnectedness of all beings? So sometimes our imagery can be abstract. When I think about connection to family, I think about that family tree. I'm a little obsessed with trees. On my resale shopping this weekend, I found some beautiful tree charms. But I think about roots and ancestors. But I also think about story. For me, I definitely have a very deep connection to animals, whether they are my own or animals and birds in the wild and what just popped into my head was a bunny. We see a lot of bunnies around here. I don't know if I know how to draw a bunny. You get nice little cottontail bunnies, which the cats love to watch outside the window. So I don't know, that looks like a chicken bunny. Um, Avon, I'll, I'll find them and tomorrow, but they're just, um, they're just a pretty little round, like brass colored charm, but they're carved in the, the shape of a, they're round and they have a tree on them. And they're just lovely. And I bought them for hanging on journals or crafting. So my friend Leslie Typerin and I have started to really get the details together for our upcoming in-person retreat, which is going to be here in Loveland, Colorado, in my studio. June, I can't remember, it's the second full weekend in June, and um, Wednesday to Sunday, it's going to be a little bit longer than we've done before, which I'm excited about, and we're adding a day to it, and our theme is time traveling through the looking glass, and so we're going to be making beautiful boxes, and handmade deck of cards or journals. We have some options for people. And so we're excited it's all coming together. So I was on the hunt for charms and details and things that we could add to our, we're gonna create something multi-dimensional instead of a flat. No, no, Yvonne, that's funny. Um, thank you, Leslie. Yes, June 5th to 9th. And um, so I'm super excited about the theme that's coming together. 
So I want to think about connection like possibility, like dreams, like opportunity. Um, another way to think about connection. I always feel deeply connected to birds. And we've been having fun seeing some of the ducks that have coming back through and we ran out of bird seed at our feeder and the birdies disappeared for a while and so they're just starting to come back. And again, allowing myself to be very playful. Yvonne, it would be fun to hang charms on a tree as well. In fact, on our one of our recent walks, somebody had made all these really pretty metal tags and uh, hung them on the bushes and trees and the in the fence line the image that's sort of popping into mine is maybe something a little wavy when i think about relationships and i think about my own marriage in april we will have been married 28 years and there's times when we are in flow together and there's times when we seem to be at odds with each other well judy if i were going to think about connection to food there's no doubt that it would be my love of coffee one of brad and i's favorite things to do is go to a coffee shop with our journals to work but this is a really fun, quick way to just think in symbols instead of in words. To think in symbols instead of words. I do love food and food for me does mean family and connection and celebration. And again, playfulness, right? Just sheer play here. There's no effort being made to create something, some masterpiece. There's only me connecting with the symbolic elements that represent those emotional echoes. And so when I think about family, it would definitely be my family sitting around a dinner table. So how can I capture that just really simply without a lot of effort? Is anyone else thinking about doing the 100 day project? Have you put thought into it? Do you not have any idea what the 100 day project is or what the heck I'm talking about? I've been a little bit obsessively thinking about it lately and I had a really fun brainstorming session with my friend, the artist Robin Marie Smith yesterday about ideas and approaches She's so good about it, super consistent. All right, this feels delightful to me. With sketching, awesome, I love that April. So the thing that I found last year that helped me personally was to have a size constraint. Um, I worked on four by six postcards. I did an animal a day for a hundred days and I also didn't limit the like supply or material. It could have been sketching, painting, drawing. So size constraint was one of the things that helped me really stick to it. Judy signed up but have it decided on your focus. Awesome. Kay, what is it? Great question. All right, so let's get some water down on the page. So it was started by a gentleman named, I think his name was Michael, and then taken over by a few other people, including the, the current host of it. Yes, small sketches. 
Um, and the idea is that you commit to a creative project every day for 100 days. So that could be um, like a little one inch, you know, sketch every day. For me, I'm thinking about you would love to do hands for the practice, but quotes would be simpler. Yes, there is that, you know, what is going to be, what's doable. I think some of my early ones that I didn't complete were mostly because the project was too ambitious. Like, a, you know, a handmade book a day would be amazing, but they would have to be like tiny matchstick books or something, right? So um, it can be writing, it can be cooking, it could be gardening. So it's not necessarily something that has to be a visual art, but it is something that is a creative project that's maybe been on your mind and your heart for a while. I usually use it in the intention of getting better at something, getting better at something, like cultivating a skill. So drawing botanicals, one year I did uh, small intuitive collages, like playing card size every day for a hundred days. I think that was the one I didn't finish. I did most of it, but we were, I don't want yellow there. Um, we were in the middle of moving at that time and it was ambitious of me to think that I could move and sustain the, the 100 day project. Yeah, April, I love sketch noting and Kay, I thought about doing 100 uh, sacred circles, but oftentimes I um, you know me that, you know, I might take a week to do one sacred circle. So what I've decided on, um, a long roll of paper using watercolor. Ooh, that sounds really fun. And then you just continue to unroll it as you go. I love that idea. So what I'm thinking about is 100 days of sketch noting because it's something that I enjoy. And some of the days can be just learning how to draw all the visual symbols like this, right? Um, so that is appealing to me, but I want to make it practical and productive because I have a very busy year ahead and I have some really big goals. So what I've decided to um, do and I'm still fine tuning and deciding, you know, how much of that I want to do here on the channel because, you know, three months of sketch noting might be boring for you guys, my viewers. So I'd have to figure out how to keep it interesting. That's always for me as a creative who loves all the things is how do I uh, keep it interesting for a hundred days? So I have some ideas, but I am working on and have outlined several outlines for my next book and ideas for my next book. And so what I'm thinking is that I'm going to use the 100 day project to get my next book written and drawn. And I want that book to be kind of a sketch note style. So I can use those 100 days to for note taking and research for writing and visual thinking about my book. So I think I'm going to, it feels ambitious and it's also exciting to think about, okay, by spring I could actually have my book done. I'm really feeling this gorgeous turquoise here, wanting to bring a little more of that in. Love when the colors spread and flow. So again, a really fun, simple page of abstract symbols inspired by Ida Kohlmeier. Grids and symbols that represent all the different ways people, um, events, beliefs, opportunities for connection to self, connection to spirit, connection to others, and connection to nature. 
which are those things that are so meaningful for me. So a fun day of simplicity. So this one, that first, actually I have now um, a couple of them in here, which is fun. So I started off really simple and this one a little more detailed and then this one I like the best. I found that structure. Um, last year I did them on postcards, Judy, and I mailed them to people, um, stuck them in notes to people or, uh, you know, gifted them to people. Some I didn't love that much. I threw them away. Um, I still have some of the, the collages from the year before, but last year it was really fun to just give them away because I, it was small. It wasn't in a sketchbook. So I just shared them freely with people. That was a ton of fun for me. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was really fun to, to be able to send them to people. Um, you know, I think some people, I think Leslie, was it you that asked me to send one to a friend? Somebody on Instagram said, Hey, I'd love one, but my friend could really use one. So, you know, I would do that sometimes and send them to people. But again, this year I want to do something that feels in um, service to some of my bigger goals and not something that is just play and fun because I do a lot of the just play and fun. So those are my thoughts. I'm going to share a lot more on Thursday. I will have more clarity and uh, insights into themes and focus and where I'm going, still thinking about all of it and about how much I want to share um, here on my YouTube channel. So again, if you're here live, thank you, thank you, thank you. I so appreciate you being here live. If you're catching the replay, thank you. Also appreciate every single one of you being here with me. We've seen a lot of awesome Judy. That's so great to know that you'd love to see the progression during the 100 days. And I think it might be something where I once a week would be my 100 day project day and I would share kind of that weekly progress and what I'm working on. So we have a new series on Mondays called Making Mornings Sacred and Tuesday, Thursday and Friday mornings are more about exploration and art journaling. And I'm excited to keep this all going. This is definitely my happy place. I love showing up with you guys. And Brad is also encouraging me once a quarter to do a longer, more project-oriented thing like we did with the New Year's Day prayer flag. So lots of good, fun stuff coming. I'm really loving this too, Judy. And I'm thinking about how else can I play with this? So that's my inquiry for today is how else can I play today? Have a beautiful rest of your day. I will see you guys on Thursday morning, February 1st with my ideas about the 100 day project, things to think about how to get ready and plan for it so that you go into it feeling really prepared. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.